how to come in there and be a one I of don't think so. biological no weapons. Offense. <laughs> we can look through the glass. You hey, know what? I'll say a prayer for you yeah, at the thanks. next council meeting. I thank you. Ah, oh, that's what's coming up. Round yes, number one. Hey, we're going to talk about it. Big win well, for the people. Invoking the Almighty. Let's get that banner back up in Cranston. Uh, well, I don't know about that, oh, J.D. Well, <laughs> WPR News Time is 9.07. Folks, a win for the people. The Supreme Court has upheld prayer at council meetings. The people have won. The atheists have have lost. The people have won. The atheists have lost. It's time to bring prayer back to council meetings and let's get that banner back up at Cranston West. We're going to talk about it right now. In the name of Jesus. Officials in Greece, New York, offered local clergymen a standing invitation. Whatever uh, individual would like to come and offer the prayer, we invite them. Town Supervisor Bill Ryland. I thought what we were doing is as common as the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag when we open a meeting. A divided Supreme Court has agreed, ruling five to four, that even though the invocations offered were nearly all Christian, as long as ministers don't proselytize or denigrate non-believers, ceremonial prayers don't violate the Constitution. Stephen Portnoy, ABC News, Washington. 909 on this Tuesday. What a big win, folks. Good morning. It is John DePietro. 438 9776. Toll free 1 800 321 WPRO. Do you have a problem with prayer at a council meeting or any gathering? Well, you just heard within the package, that's where it started. And now closer to home, I know this morning on the WPRO Morning News with Gene Valicente, who just actually got off the air, handed the baton to yours truly. He had on, I believe, Westerly, Westerly Town Council and also from the Cranston Town Council. So now I just heard Gene play this. Uh, he played both at 945, uh, 845. At 845. So let's hear the, do we have it queued up? The, the what? Let's hear. This is uh, Westerly talking about the fact that they start off the council with prayer. Councilman Cook and Westerly, tell me how you begin the session there. We always begin the session with an invocation and then the pledge of allegiance. All right. Is it necessarily a Christian prayer? Would you characterize it as that? No. I mean, you know, I was just thinking about this last night, and um, I mean, I I happen to be Christian. I'm an Episcopalian. Um, we're not really known for proselytizing, but I think the prayers that I usually read are. I hate to use this word, but, I mean, I think they're fairly generic. I don't, I don't think that any of us on the council really say, you know, Jesus Christ this or Muhammad right. that or Buddha that. I mean, it's, it's pretty much, uh, you know, a moment of reflection, uh, kind of get your thoughts together, uh, a moment of silence some people take. And, and I was just thinking last night at our council meeting, for example, one of the ladies on the council uh, read something that didn't even resemble a prayer. It just said, you know, um, let's think about what we're going to do tonight and think about the people we represent. And the only thing that included in that it could be a prayer was at the end she said, you know, amen. Right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Now, that's Westerly. Now let's hear my hometown of Cranston. And this is, uh, I believe, the head of the city council, Ferreira, again on the WPRO Morning News speaking with Gene. Uh, council Vice President Michael Farina is in Cranston. Farina. In Cranston, you do things a little differently. Tell me what you do, Councilman. Uh, usually when we start our meetings, uh, the council president will get up for the caucus. Uh, he'll welcome everybody to the chamber, and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance, and then get on with our business. Um, historically, we don't start with any kind of invocations or prayers. Uh, like uh, the councilman said, it's more of a tradition. In, in Cranston, we start the Pledge of Allegiance and go right into our meeting. Right. But that doesn't mean we don't have moments of silence. You know, Usually when there's when something happens, it's a tragedy, or if there's an issue, we'll have a moment of silence, or we'll say a silent prayer. Uh, we don't typically uh, try to push religion on anybody in our city. That doesn't mean we can't. Uh, this ruling, I think, will give us the ability you know, that, if that we wanted to say so brief prayer, uh, something generic, we could. You're not pushing religion on anyone. See, that's the... He's the vice president for Rena. First of all, you know, well, that's not a tradition. Well, I bet it was your tra tradition. Cranston is the worst. What has happened? First, they fold to the ACLU and the atheists with the banner. And now they're, well, you know, we're not pushing religion. No one's pushing religion. I am willing to bet the tradition was to start off with a prayer. I, I can't, it's, it's so, I can't believe how weak Cranston is 
uh, the city that I grew up in and, and just how weak. And, and that's a representative. I mean, it, it is hardly the best of the best. That's not pushing religion on anyone. Folks, do you have a problem that if you attend some kind of a meeting, if they start off with, and I don't mind the word that the Westerly Town Council started, in some kind of like a generic prayer, the Supreme Court has now said that there's nothing wrong with it. So despite everything you've heard in this state, you know, and of course Rhode Island is the worst with the secular progressive, your Governor Chafee, you know, Mr. Holiday Tree, Mr. War Against Religion. Is Ms. this Shoup. a religious program? Yeah, Mr. Atheist Day, Mr., uh, you know, celebrating Uncle Atheist and the Child Atheist and everything else. You can't go on Rhode Island. If we had a different governor, number one, things would be better, and number two, you wouldn't have the tone set at the top. But the Supreme Court has now come out and ruled that there's nothing wrong with starting off with a prayer to start start a meeting. You would think that this idiot in Cranston would have said, well, we're going to enact it right away. Instead of cowering like the cowards that they are to the ACLU and the atheists, that banner never should have been taken down. And that banner in Cranston West should go back up. You just heard that in Westerly, they finish with amen. So what is the problem with that? 438-9776. Toll free, 1-800-321-WPRO. Do you think it's pushing religion if, in fact, you they say a prayer before they start of a council meeting? I, I think they used to start off with a prayer up on uh, Smith Hill before the General Assembly would meet. A narrowly divided Supreme Court upheld decidedly Christian prayers at the start of local council meetings on Monday, declaring them in line with long national traditions, though the country has grown more religiously diverse. That's the the thing about the Cranston remark. That wasn't our tradition. You couldn't be more wrong. That was the tradition until some idiot in Cranston folded to the atheists in the ACLU and took it out. It's just the opposite. Well, that wasn't the tradition. No, that was the tradition. You have that backwards. We're trying to push religion on people. The nerve of these people. And you wonder why Cranston's in the trouble that it's in. The content of the Prius is not as significant as long as they do not denigrate non-Christians or try to win converts. Let me hear again this um, vice president of the uh, school committee. No, uh, the council. City council in Cranston, Farina. His comments saying, you know, we're trying to push religion on people. Let me hear that again. Uh, Council Vice President Michael Farina is in Cranston. In Cranston, you do things a little differently. Tell me what you do, Councilman. Uh, usually when we start our meetings, uh, the Council President will get up before the caucus. Uh, he'll welcome everybody to the chamber, and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance, and then get on with our business. Um, historically, we don't start with any kind of indications of prayers. Uh, like uh, the Councilman said, it's more of a tradition. In, in Cranston, we start the Pledge of Allegiance and go right into our meeting. Right. But that doesn't mean we don't have moments of silence. You know, usually when there's when something happens, it's a tragedy, or but there's an issue, we'll have a moment of silence, or we'll say a silent prayer. Uh, we don't typically uh, try to push religion on anybody in our oh city. That doesn't mean God. we can't. Uh, this ruling, I think, will give us the ability, if we wanted to say a brief prayer, uh, something generic, we could. Folks, do you feel, is if you say a brief prayer before, so first of all, the whole everybody does the pledge of allegiance, so you know you're not exactly breaking ground here. But you know, maybe I'll step back for a moment. Is that pushing religion on people if before you would start uh, a council meeting like that, if they started with a brief, uh, somewhat generic type prayer? Is that pushing religion on people? Can't you say the opposite? That if you don't say anything, that's basically you're saying an atheist prayer by not saying anything. That that's the atheist creed, which of course is transparent, which is a, a blank wall, which of course stands for nothing. What I like about this Supreme Court decision is it turns Rhode Island on its head. In in Rhode Island now, this doesn't this seems foreign. Like how is this possible? Like oh wait a you know wait a minute we've been told for the past three years. That, oh, you can't have it that way. And Governor Chafee talked about, you know, well, when I was in school and they used to make us say the Lord's Prayer, that that's, that's not what we're talking about. 
So, um, but this is the Supreme Court now weighing in five to four, though, that Christian prayers opening local meetings are ceremonial and reflect the nation's traditions. Isn't that what the, the, the Cranston banner represents? Doesn't that reflect the nation's tradition by having the student prayer hanging up at Cranston West? I mean, how can, how can you okay a meeting, a prayer at a council meeting, where they finish with amen, but then you have to rip down that banner in Cranston because it said Heavenly Father and amen at the end? Folks, it's right. I, I think because of the Supreme Court decision, the Cranston banner should be revisited. Again, now, the Supreme Court has decided that you can start off a school committee meeting, council meeting, whatever it is, basically, basically some kind of a generic prayer. Do you feel is that trying to push religion on people? And those in Cranston, isn't this an indication they should revisit the banner issue? I'm John DePietro. We'll come back and take your phone calls. Typically, uh, try to push religion on anybody in our city. That doesn't mean we can't. Uh, this ruling, I think, will give us the ability, if we wanted to say a brief prayer, uh, something can be put. Officials in Greece, New York, offered local clergymen a standing invitation. Whatever uh, individual would like to come and offer the prayer, we invite them. Town Supervisor Bill Ryland. I thought what we were doing is as common as the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag when we open a meeting. A divided Supreme Court has agreed, word to four to four, that even though the invocations offered were nearly all Christian, as long as ministers don't proselytize or denigrate non-believers, ceremonial prayers don't violate the Constitution. Stephen Portnoy, ABC News, Washington. 925 on this Tuesday. Good morning, everybody. This is John DePietro. Look at that. Now, the Supreme Court has weighed in. It's okay to have a prayer at a council meeting. If they do that, do you agree with that was the, um, whatever it is, the assistant uh, or the vice chair at Cranston City Council saying that it pushes religion on people? Do you feel that way? Tonight, if you went to, let's just say you went to a, a, a Warwick council meeting, and they started off with a prayer. Do you feel, is that pushing religion on people? If you went to a Providence City Council meeting or a Cranston City Council meeting or wherever, is that pushing religion on people if they start off with some kind of a generic prayer? The Supreme Court has now ruled that it's a national tradition that it's okay. 438-9776. Don't you think in Rhode Island, because of Governor Chafee, that we've swung too much, too much power to the atheists? too much of don't mention God at all. and I mean, it's it's completely out of step with the rest of the country. Chris Young joins us from Providence on WPRO. Good morning, Chris. Hi, John. Well, this is uh, clearly a victory for um, those who want religious freedom and free speech in our nation. And, you know, clearly um, in this in this area of the district, uh, in, in the U.S. Supreme Court decision, um, it's allowed for certain religious loud loud out in in these public forums the problem though is that we had thousands of people show up at yep. uh in, in the, at the cranston city hall and uh, we did robo calls and the people of cranston wanted the banner to stand yes. in cranston but the communist fascists that are in our government that have infiltrated our country and, and are trying to undermine freedom of speech and freedom of religion they didn't want the banner up and and we said clearly that the U.S. Supreme Court would rule on our side if we took the case further forward. But these individuals who are controlled by union interests, union interests that are influenced by um, communist interests, they, they push this agenda. And unless the people of this state see that our government has been infiltrated by communists who want to push ism, ism to break down this country, to remove all hope so that people will accept communism so that people will accept fascism because that's the true agenda behind what they're doing they want to remove religion from the public square like the aclu that was started by a communist his name is roger Baldwin. i know i don't want to lessen on that whole thing chris you know we we give him a gamble and we put him on and then he just goes off on a tangent instead of just sticking to the issue so i tried the first time we've had him on in three months and again he reminds me why we don't have him on but again when we come back the supreme court has ruled it is okay to start off a council meeting with a prayer. I hope some member of the media 
puts a microphone in front of uh, Governor Gump today if he's back from Europe and ask him about that. But what do you think? If that happens, is that pushing religion on people? In the name of Jesus. Officials in Greece, New York, offered local clergymen a standing invitation. Whatever uh, individual would like to come and offer the prayer, we invite them. Town Supervisor Bill Ryland. I thought what we were doing is as common as a pledge of allegiance to the flag when we open a meeting. A divided Supreme Court has agreed, ruling five to four, that even though the invocations offered were nearly all Christian, as long as ministers don't proselytize or denigrate non-believers, ceremonial prayers don't violate the Constitution. Stephen Portnoy, ABC News, Washington. 9.38 on this Tuesday. That's good news for all of us. Bad news for the atheists. Bad news for Governor Chafee, the secular progressives. Folks, what is wrong? Is that pushing religion? You start off with the ceremonial prayer that you've always had. I disagree with the council person from Cranston. Well, you know, we don't like to push religion on people. Come on. That's not what it is. I think this state has gone too far. I think it started with the governor. Governor Chafee started this whole, you know, movement in commending the atheists in Cranston and tearing down the banner, then the whole holiday tree, then... Just last week, proclaiming Atheist Day in Rhode Island. Hope springs eternal. Uh, Is he back from Europe yet? When I was in first and second grade, we used to say the Lord's Prayer. Uh, It's a long time ago, Gumster. But now, I, I don't see it, the harm. I don't see it as pushing religion. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. Especially, I think, uh, the largest part of this is the Supreme Court saying that the tradition of it. And and that's really where they lost in Cranston, was the nature of they should have argued that it was a, a gift to the school, it was an old relic, and it was just the tradition of having it up there. Um, and they should have ignored the ACLU instead of having all those meetings and all the people coming out, and that then just made the case for the atheists. But I just don't see it that way. In the same way, uh, you know, I'm already getting email. With um, we talked about the people don't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. How about this one from, uh, let's see, from Sally. Uh, Dear John, listen to your show every day. I want you to know, although I listen to your program, I am proud atheist. My family and I, we make a point not to stand during God Bless America when we have gone to a ballpark or any arena where they play that. That is our way of showing our protest. More people should take up this act of defiance of not standing or singing aloud or acknowledging God bless America. I don't like God forced down my throat at a baseball game. Now, here's the thing. Do you feel is that trying to shove God down your throat? Should they stop God bless America, whether it be at the Paw Sox or Yankee Stadium or Fenway Park? This country was founded Uh, to be a secular country. Do you feel, folks, is that pushing religion on you? Is that something that should be eliminated? God bless America if you go to a ballpark, whether it be the Patriots. or They certainly do it at Fenway. God forbid. Yeah, I don't think so. Should they uh, take God bless America out of the ball game? If you're there, I'm trying to think. So you're an atheist, and they start playing God bless America at the, at the game. Is that what you then sit down and protest? How about, like, you're the what, point one of the 1%. That, that just don't go along. I, I just, we, we can't keep, like, caving to that crowd. You know, stop playing God Bless America at Fenway Park. Kathy in Portsmouth on WPRO with John DePietro. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning. Kathy, beautiful, Kathy, beautiful, Kathy. beautiful day. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for, for uh, bringing this um, God bless you, Kathy. Forward. Yes. Now, my opinion is that um, what, what, what was at stake here was the recognition of a supreme being. Yes. And the court now has, has made that ruling, and hopefully it will stand. And perhaps uh, in doing so, people in this country will garner up the moral courage to stand up and not go screaming into the night uh, every time someone gets offended. Uh, the the uh, right to, to recognize... Uh, the, the existence of a supreme being has been with this country since its forefathers. And we're, we're allowing every wacko uh, to, to, that comes along to under the, under the underpinnings of our, of our government and, and our country. And unfortunately, many 
uh, church leaders even run scared uh, when when these issues come up. They don't want to be um, looked at as offended. No one in this country is dragged kicking and screaming into a church. Nobody cares whether you're an atheist, and if you're ignorant enough to sit uh, during the singing of uh, God Bless America, then, you know, that's, that's your problem, and live with it. Uh, but I, I'm delighted with the ruling, and I wish um, that the, the courage demonstrated by St. John Paul II uh, during the treacherous days of World War II, That's when so right. much was at stake, yes. would transfer uh, now that he is a saint. Captain Fine, Fine that, um, that Governor Chafee, that he inflames the whole atheist movement, and he's been a big part of the attack in religion in, in Rhode Island. Well, it's... It, he is, God help him, he's a national disgrace, out uh, shopping around looking for a job. Uh, every All these trips, they're all focused on his, himself, and that's the way he's lived his life, and, and uh, it's an unfortunate situation. But. Yeah. Thank you for the call, Kathy. William in Providence on WPRO with John DePietro. Good morning, William. Yes, sir. Good morning, William. It's not a matter of pushing religion. It's a matter of reminding of, of our heritage. Yes, now that we've become so inextricably involved with the world, it's more important than ever. That's right. That's why we've been blown about by every, by every week. We, 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 you know, we, we, you know, we've forgotten our roots. We've got no roots. That is exactly yeah. right, William. And mm-hmm. it's time. Listen, I like that they weighed in and said that it, it it's a tradition. And what I, I'm shocked that Cranston said our tradition hasn't been that. Listen, everybody had it. And then someone not knowing, you know, probably with the banner situation. You know, they are running scared. Folks, stop being afraid of the politically correct. I admit, they're bullies. You know, the attack on religion. They are bullies. They have the ACLU with them. They threaten everyone. They've even turned the whole thing upside down of separation of church and state. But how much is enough? You know, people offended that they play, you know, God bless America at Fenway Park. And an atheist saying, oh, I sit down and protest. They shouldn't be playing that to stop that. You know, there's the, the the whole element of the game is to bring the crowd in, to bring the crowd as one, to have a sense of tradition, whether it be standing for, you know, the national anthem or the seventh inning stretch. I could do without the whole, um, what's her name, Caroline? I, I could do without that whole thing. But anyhow, I know some people look forward to it. But now that, you know, get, oh, God bless America is offending people. It's pushing religion on people. I, I I wish they would realize they're in the minority. That was the whole thing with Governor Gump. I mean, he he refused to acknowledge, as a secular progressive, they're, they're under 10%. You know, this whole war on Christmas, war on religion. We want Atheist Day on the National Day of Prayer. Their war is unending. We're working on it. They're mean-spirited. They're just mean-spirited individuals. I, I go back to the whole situation with the banner. It wasn't enough they wanted it removed. They wanted it destroyed. And it wasn't enough like, all right, we're going to reword certain things. No, it was never going to be good enough. And so now I, it, it's unreal. The Supreme Court weighs in. It's okay to do it. Yet here in the ocean state, it would be uh, it would be frowned upon. Or some you know unknowing idiot would say, oh, I don't think we're allowed to do that anymore. Bob in Harrisville on WPRO with John DePietro. Good morning, Bob. Uh, good morning, John. How are you doing? Very well, Bob. Uh, Go I right ahead. Just, i just like to uh, say I'm 77 years old, and when I was in school, and we uh, said the Lord's Prayer in the morning, uh, the Roman Catholics used to say, they're our father, the way it is. The Protestants would add to it, uh, Jewish and uh Atheists were respected as not participating at all, right. and that was okay then. Sure. Well, it's and come I- a long way. Thank you for the call, Bob. A long way since then. On this Tuesday, good morning, everybody. This is John DePietro. Weekdays, 9 till noon, right here on WPRO. Patrick's in situate on WPRO. Good morning, Patrick. Uh, good morning, John. Uh, yeah, one of the, the things I can never understand with some of these cases is that um, – the Constitution, how it says, we all know what it says, Congress should make no law respecting the establishment of a religion. How is that establishing a religion when right. you're when you, uh, just having a religious leader, you know, lead a prayer? 
I, I don't understand how that lower court could have even said that that was a violation of the Establishment Clause. You know, whenever you get into the courts, Patrick, it's, it's so confusing. There are agendas at play, and then never mind in politics, where you have all these, thank you for the call, Patrick, these people that say we're going to err on the side of caution, and instead they err on the side of ridiculous. All right.